Now we've interviewed one of my former colleagues because I used to work on RT America as was, now defunct. Now we're about to interview another of my colleagues. They thought that they had silenced both Lee Camp and Farhan Fronchek, but my goodness, they misunderestimated them. Farhan, welcome back. You're still firing on all cylinders. I follow your output avidly. Um, we'll come towards the end of our talk uh, on how people can follow you, what you're doing now. Uh, but I was exploring with Lee Camp uh, the comic potential of international politics right now. And there's mm -hmm. no comedian funnier than Joe Biden, unless you have the misfortune to be living under his rule. Uh, but when I saw him this week clear the television schedules to... I don't know if he'd had an injection or taken a pill uh, or what, uh, but he he became he became Hitler up there on the on oh. the podium. I mean, not the content of his speech, but his hand waving, his histrionics, his uh, his voice. I mean, he was uh, he was high. <laughs> you know, George. I got to tell you, with a little bit of comedic background to me as well, just like Lee, I got to say, you just stole my joke. I was going to say, if you would have put a little silver stash on Joe Biden, coupled with the blood red backdrop, you would have proven every single conspiracy theorist right that Hitler, in fact, did go to South America and he came back to the U.S. for his final <laughs> goodbye speech. I mean, it was over the top. And the best part of it all, uh, George, was that you have this backdrop of blood red, okay? Joe Biden is a Democrat, okay? Their color, if you don't know, is bright blue, like the color I'm wearing, okay? Uh, I don't know who his uh, set designers were. Uh, I don't, I'm honestly, I'm gonna say this, George, I don't think it was a woman because we would not have passed up the chance to have a beautiful blue background, but you also had it too, where it was in front of Independence Hall, which for those over across the pond, that's in Philadelphia, the very first, capital of the United States, which I guarantee you most average, below average American doesn't realize that or know that. And it's also where the Constitution was drafted in 1789 at the Constitutional Convention, which also many average, below average Americans don't know that. So they thought they were making like this big deal, this big, big speech about democracy and being in front of the place where it all started. Totally went over everybody's head. All they heard was Trump bad, MAGA Republicans, uh, this is a, a, an assault on democracy, and frankly, what the Republicans are calling it, they're calling it a dog whistle for violence. Now, you again, let's go back to that blood red background that you know you saw kind of with any other dictator like Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, all giant bright red backgrounds in the and, and when they were giving their di like dictator speeches in, in history that we've seen. Um, the one funny part of it all was is CNN, for some reason, they had a weird pink background. And many people were saying, wait a minute, CNN has new ownership now. Uh, they want to be more of the unbiased, just straightforward news. How is it that everybody had a red background, but CNN had a pink background? Oh, they found out that they altered the hue of the picture to make it more pink and less blood red in your face. When they were actually asked about this, George, they said, oh, well, it was just because of the CBS feed that we were getting the picture from. Well, George, you and I, we're not idiots. We come from, we were in this industry. We know that when you get a feed from another network, it's not like it shows a blue for one, pink and purple for the other. It's all red. They were caught red handed. This after they wanted to be the new fair and unbiased news. Hilarious. Maybe they, maybe they wanted to send an L, LGBTQ plus I whatever uh, message. Maybe that's what they were up to. Now, Hillary One way Clinton. To do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Hillary Clinton uh, coined that uh, disastrous phrase, uh, a basket of deplorables, uh, to describe the kind of people that were then shaping up. Uh, to vote for Donald Trump against her. She succeeded in putting far more of them in the basket than there had been in the first place. But Biden went much further than that. In his speech, he effectively declared half the country 
to be enemies of the state, didn't he? Well, and not only that, George, he said, and I quote, he said, uh, you know, as they see their, their MAGA failure to stop a peaceful transfer of power after the 2020 election as a preparation for the 2022 and 2024 elections, there's no question that the Republican Party today is dominated, driven and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. OK, then he goes on the next day saying, well, I wasn't talking about all Republicans. I was just talking about the MAGA ones, the regular Republicans. They're not a threat. And you have to ask yourself again, like you said, OK, well, define then the difference between a MAGA Republican and a regular Republican, because here's what happened, George. When you had the Trump Mar-a-Lago FBI raid, the, 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 the night of the day after, Every single Republican came forward and said, this is insane. This is, a, you know, this is this is political. The FBI is political. What's happening here? Maybe he didn't go as far as to say it's a witch hunt. But what that says is Donald Trump is the head of the Republican Party when everyone has been trying to deny it, even so much so as Mitch McConnell, the minority Republican leader in the Senate. They realized that day of the raid, he is still the Republican leader. And for Joe Biden to put this in there, knowing that now, as everybody sees it, Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican Party. It is that classic back to 2016 basket of deplorables. But now they're even worse. They're tyrannical. They're led by a dictator, fascist government under Donald Trump. And they want to overthrow every single election and bring everybody back to basically the Stone Age and start over. Uh, a lot of Americans weren't having it. Now, if you look at the Democratic side, they thought that the speech was just unifying. And there's no political. It's not political to talk about bringing back democracy. It's not political at all. So. You really have two schools of thought here, which just goes to show that many of our politicians still remain useless and clueless. Well, the one thing we are not is a United Kingdom, and the one thing you are not is a United States. Uh, the yeah, polarization no. in politics in our country and yours uh, has never been more extreme. Uh, it, certainly in our case, and I think in yours also. Uh, it's quite clear to me, just following the media coverage and on social media, the level of fear of another Donald Trump election victory amongst people that call themselves liberals, pussy hats, uh, the chatterati, the commentariat, and all, the level of fear is reaching extreme proportions. Some are saying, for example, should people under investigation for espionage, which of course Trump is not, but should people under investigation for espionage be allowed to hold massive public rallies? That tells you it was a massive public rally that he held. Mm -hmm. And they're terrified that he's coming back. Are they right to be? George, they are. They have absolutely every single right to be terrified. And I'll tell you why. You go back to the U.S. Constitution. They were trying to make it out that there was this one little clause and one little, uh, you know, uh, uh, article in the Constitution that, you know, if somebody gets indicted for, you know, having, you know, it was like basically going against presidential duties that they could be removed from office. Guess what? The Constitution has three requirements for running for president. You have to be over the age of 35. You have to have lived in the United States for at least 14 years. And you have to be a U.S. citizen. That's it. We've had congressmen actually run from their prison cells in our history, okay? They're terrified because they know no matter what they do, even if he were to run from his jail cell, he could still do it if he wanted to, if he gets caught for espionage. And that's one of the biggest problems here, George, is you're seeing that, you know, we have 2022 midterms coming up here in, in less than two months, November. And you have where the Democrats are probably going to lose the House. And it's going to probably go back to the Republicans. The Senate, still somewhat of a toss up, but the House is what they're really looking at because Republicans have talked about, and mind you, the Democrats and the Republicans for this midterm cycle, they both are not running on anything except get get the other guy out of power. It's a very easy, just blatant, we're done with the other side, so vote for us. 
the laziest election you can imagine, okay? But one thing that Republicans have promised, though, is they want to hold Benghazi-style investigations into three major things. They want to look into Hunter Biden's foreign business dealings. They want to look at the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan and how they say Joe Biden botched it. And then they also want to talk about the collapsed sale of Twitter to Elon Musk. So Democrats are really trying to stop this kind of wave, as Republicans are saying, no, 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 no. They had the whole January 6th hearings. If you've seen, you know, uh, if you've been following U.S. politics at all, which honestly was kind of a big dud. A lot of Americans didn't really watch it because they're worried about how to put food on the table and pay for gas. Uh, so you have all these other Republicans saying, you know what? S -s Strap in, folks. When we get the House back, oh, man, are we going to have a field day with Democrats? So, uh, again, as you said, not united as far as any United States goes. Uh, but it, like you said, it doesn't seem like we're the only ones. It seems like the UK, our brothers and sisters across no. the pond, you guys might be going through the same thing. Yeah, you're definitely not alone, and neither are we both alone. Uh, if you saw the 100,000 people yesterday in Wenceslas Square in Prague, mm -hmm. uh, the Bulgarian government has already fallen. The Albanian government might well fall. Uh, there are, uh, Macron lost his majority. Boris Johnson is out this evening. He's actually moving out of Downing Street as we speak with the removal van and all of his uh, movables. Uh, so um, it's not going too well for uh, the likes of Joe Biden. And you can't win elections just talking about the other guy when you mm -hmm. yourself are historically unpopular. Uh, Joe Biden has approval ratings uh, that uh, have scarcely, if ever, been worsened by any other president of the United States. And his deputy, Kamala Harris, is even less popular than him. So I think the writing's on the wall in November, Farah. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you not only have that, George, but you also just have this whole dichotomy of the last election, you know, we had 2016 where it really kind of swung in, swung open the doors to more of a populist president the way that Donald Trump ran. Then in 2020, it was basically, you know, a referendum on Donald Trump swinging back the other way. Now with Joe Biden's approval rating being around 34 percent, the lowest that we've seen in probably a century now, uh, you know, you're going to have that pendulum swing ultimately the exact opposite way. And you wonder why. Uh, or Americans wonder why, especially the elite class, because there really is no Democrat, Republican. They're all in the same party. It's us versus everybody else, the elite versus everybody else, us, the peasants. Um, but they're sitting there wondering, wh why is it that nobody, everyone's leaving the party? We have the most independent voters than the country has ever seen because they're seeing that the, the Democrats don't help you. The Republicans will say that they help you. But then kind of when push comes to shove, it's always all oh, the Democrats did wouldn't let us do it. Uh, but Republicans have, have seen less of a decline than the Democrats. The Democrats have been the ones that have promised so much from free everything. They get into office. They have the House the Senate and the White House and nothing gets done. Uh, and, you know, and then but then the Democrats get all mad with with Senator Joe Manchin and Senator Kirsten Sinema, who held everything up. There's always an excuse for everything. And Amer the American people are starting to see that it's owned by big corporations, by the big tech, by big oil, by the military industrial complex. And people are changing it to independent. And the one thing that I will say that I'm very happy about with Americans, I even see on my show, you know, even folks that, from my show are coming over to your show and seeing more of what's going around, on around the world. And they're loving what they're seeing just from the chat that I can see. Uh, they're saying, wow, not only are we not the only ones being lied to, it seems like a lot of other people are getting lied to. They don't care about us. We're actually starting to really do deep dives into these candidates to where, no, you know, you said this, but then you were going around and doing that. That's not going to work for me this time around. So voters are getting smarter. And, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in these midterms, George, because I think both sides of the aisle, their feet will be held to the fire in some way or another. Well, in the words of Michael Jackson, all I want to say is they don't care. They really, they don't really care about us. I wish I hadn't fluffed that line. You're looking fabulous <laughs> in front of that pink wall. 
uh, what, uh, how can people follow your, uh, your channel, what you're doing? Uh, oh, really quick, you said Michael Jackson. I'm going to give you one with George Carlin, my all-time favorite. I'm glad Lee brought him up before. Uh, it's a big club, and we ain't in it. That's, that's, I think, the overarching one, too. Uh, but no, so I'm on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash uh, fair and balanced. It's F-A-R-A-N balanced. I'm also on locals, fair and balanced locals.com, where uh, it's uncensored. Uh, it's, it's free to sign up. Uh, and there I, I go live every morning, uh, U.S. time and talk unfiltered uh straight from the heart uh, a lot more of my opinions and how i feel but then again every night u.s time for my show fair and balance where we talk politics with a little bit of commentary and of course some comedy along with it fabulous farron thanks very much indeed as always for joining us on the mother of all talk shows